It's uh, quarter to five on BBC Radio Nottingham and a look at the day's news headlines. So Labour celebrating victory in Nottinghamshire's county council elections. Nationally, UKIP has seen a surge in support and looks set to win around 23% of the vote. And an aspiring Nottingham model's career has been ruined after her face was slashed in an argument over some milk. Looking at the forecast, Kay Forster here in a few moments. Going into the bank holiday weekend, she'll tell you what to expect. Meanwhile, travel news first. Well, I'm pleased to say, as we head towards the May Day bank holiday, uh, no reported accidents or incidents from the police in and around the city. It's just the usual rush hour queues, really, heading clockwise on the ring road between the QMC and the Crown Island, as it is heading clockwise on the ring road out towards Arnold on Valley Road. In Arnold, very congested in both directions on the A60 Mansfield Road, as you head from the Ollerton Road Junction and Thackeray's Lane. And in Mansfield, looking very congested now in both directions on Chesterfield Road, as you head between West Hill Drive and Rosemary Street. Still very busy through Clifton on the A453 as you head from the Silverdale Island out towards the M1 at Junction 24 and the M1 as expected very very slow firstly between Junction 22 at Ashby up towards 24A the turn off the A50 and East Midlands Airport and then as you head further north looking snarled up between 28 at Alfreton up towards 29 at Mansfield. I'm Louisa Allen and your next travel is just after the news at 5 o'clock. Rush hour travel every 15 minutes. BBC Radio Nottingham. Your breakfast show on BBC Radio Nottingham. All the build up to Forest Leicester City first thing tomorrow morning. Bringing you some brand new films, loads of entertainment ideas for your weekend, whatever the weather. Although it looks to be pretty good. And Julian Clary, ahead of appearing at the Playhouse. Uh, my ride is just plums and bananas. Right. Hear plenty more from Julian in the morning. Mark Dennison. Tomorrow at breakfast. BBC Radio Nottingham. Weather. BBC Radio Nottingham. Well, will Julian's plums and bananas be wilting in the heat? <laughs> Sunday night. Okay, full stuff continue now. It doesn't, does it? Dare I say we can have something? So yes, there's something for everyone this weekend, really. A little bit murky for us now. We've got the uh, cloud coming in, and the breeze is starting to pick up. up as well. That will bring us some rain overnight, not amounting to a great deal, just giving the gardens a drink, really. But a damp and a breezy end to the night, and a month as well. So is our low temperatures. Now, tomorrow morning, a disappointing start to the bank holiday, really, compared to the recent days, that is. Cloudy and damp to start off. afternoon and the skies will slip it's not behind that as well so slow improvements for us on saturday although it will feel a bit cooler and fresher than the past few days with highs of around 14 to 15 degrees into sunday looking like a mostly dry day on sunday quite a lot of cloud around at times but again that cloud being chopped up to give us a few brighter bits and some sunny spells um again on with the day really for sunday but feeling warmer 18 degrees is the top temperature on sunday and pressure continues to build for monday Monday is our driest, our brightest day of the bank holiday weekend. Lots of sunshine, and dare I say it is going to be even warmer. Temperatures into the 20s, possibly 21 degrees by Monday afternoon. 21 today. Ooh. And we'll be saying all being well on Monday then. <laughs> Thank you very much, DK Forster. And uh, that nice forecast you can see in more detail with pictures and everything on East Midlands today from 6.30 on BBC One, which also tells you the story of uh, a man who almost lost his leg when a wall collapsed on him. And the moment when that wall collapsed onto the man has uh, been captured on film, amazingly. Uh, but not only that, you'll hear from the surgeon who uh, managed to make uh, the leg all better again. And so uh, a full recovery. A great story to uh, tell on East Midlands Day from 6.30. Also, a police naming a suspected burglar whose body was found in a solicitor's chimney. Uh, that's a couple of things to listen out for and look out for on East Midlands Day from 6.30 on BBC One. Meanwhile, here on BBC Radio Nottingham, after 6 o'clock, it's pre-match, and uh, Robin Chipperfield welcomes Steve Hodge to the studio this evening. Uh, so you'll know he's uh, been uh, an England player and a Forest player, and uh, he's got plenty to say, I'm sure, ahead of the weekend football uh, in the Championship, we could see Forest getting into the playoffs. So Steve Hodge, live with Robin, after 6 o'clock this evening. Now, described as a party house from hell, by neighbours, 
It was a place that shattered the peace and quiet of a quiet residential cul-de-sac. But yesterday, Broxley Borough Council secured a closure order against the home, uh, privately rented by a 26-year-old woman. Uh, the closure order sent in locksmiths, meaning that no one, not even the landlord, could enter the property for three months. That could be extended. It's only the third time a measure of this kind has been used in Nottinghamshire in the past year. And as BBC Radio Nottingham's Naveen Malik found out, it was very warmly welcomed by the other residents of Dickens Court in Newthorpe. She's had enough chances to be able to sell. We couldn't get to sleep. We couldn't consider selling the house because the properties are all devalued. 26-year-old Leanne Webb wasn't here to watch the property she rented fitted with metal grates on the windows and doors. And she wasn't in court to see District Judge Pyle sign the closure order that now hangs on the front and the back. Absolutely elated, to be honest. If I lived next door, it was just awful. Noisy, shouting, the smell from whatever they were smoking. You're waiting for it to kick off every time. As soon as you saw him come in the house, you thought, wait for it. Helen there, she's not stopped smiling since the bird, because uh, it's been horrendous. Partying on the street, antisocial behaviour bottles. No. Well, you feel like you, you lose your human rights because you can't go outside. Dickens Court in Newthorpe seems a quiet residential cul-de-sac of privately owned and rented homes with well-kept lawns and friendly neighbours. Neighbours who say their peace was broken when Miss Webb moved in around two years ago. Police have been called here 84 times since she did. Hi there, you're looking very happy. <laughs> <laughs> 1982, uh, when you were first built, is when we moved here. And we never saw a policeman for 20 years. And we saw a policeman on a bicycle. For the past two years, we've seen policemen every other day. What we've got to do is put our car away tonight, just in case there's some reprisals. We'll tell you little, but we'll tell you as much as we can. Right, okay. um, because we've not worked all our life till our retirement destroyed. And so is that a level of fear we here? It was fear and really irritation as well, you know, constant, constant irritation. Now with the help of the police and Broxdale Borough Council's antisocial behaviour officer, Sharon Matthews, neither she nor her landlord, who's believed to be her uncle, or anyone else will be allowed into this property for at least three months. It's quite an extreme measure. How many steps did you have to take before it was deemed that was the final option? She's had numerous warnings. Uh, we've had multi-agency meetings about it. Everything we've tried to do to assist her, uh, she hasn't wanted to engage with us. It's just basically the last straw. I mean, some people.